What's up everyone? So, as you might know, I'm an online personal trainer who lives and works in Shenzhen, China. So I've been here for about eight and a half years, and this gives me a unique insight and puts me in a unique position to explain the coronavirus. So the measures that have been put in place here in Shenzhen and all over China have really been historically unprecedented. Hundreds of millions of people have been put, put in quarantine, face masks, everyone wears them, everyone is staying home. My wife didn't leave the house for a month, and that wasn't really uncommon. Most people did that. If you walked out on the streets, there would be 1% of the people that there used to be. That's how extreme the measures were. The thing is, none of these measures were put in place by Europe. Or by America. Most of these quarantines that have been taking place in Italy and in other countries have been very weak. Uh, any kind of sectioning off of the population also has been very weak. Part of this is because, let's face it, Europe is a more free country and people expect to be able to do what they want. Whereas here, the population is more focused on what is good for society. Now, the cynics might say, oh, the Chinese government can control the population more, and that's true, they can. Uh, but I think under this kind of situation, it is clearly more effective. Part of what China did was they shut down all public gatherings. So all movie theaters, the entire country, uh, all restaurants for a while in the entire country, all gyms have closed. My gym is still closed. I haven't gone to the gym in two months. Obviously, I'm still, you know, making progress, uh, which brings me to my main point of the video. If you live in Europe, if you live in America, I would highly consider not going to the gym. It'll probably close in a few weeks anyway, but you might want to be proactive and do bodyweight exercises at home instead. Uh, how much muscle will you lose in a few weeks? Zero. How much progress will you lose? Very little. Uh, I think in this case, it makes more sense to be safe, to be prudent, and to do bodyweight exercises. They're still very effective, as you'll see, and you can still make some gains. So in this video, I'm going to go over four pulling exercises and three pushing exercises. So the first pulling exercise is going to be an overhand grip pull-up. So this is gonna work the lats, it's gonna work the teres major, which is that small muscle uh, on the, just below the shoulder blade, you can see. Uh, it's slightly higher than the lats, which also assists with that type of uh, pulling exercise. It also works the biceps, the forearms, and the abdominals. So this is gonna be one of the more challenging pulling exercises, and really is quite different from chin-ups. This is really gonna work your scapula in a slightly different way. The first pushing exercise is going to be a pike push-up. So I haven't, I haven't done these before, but I've been doing these recently as I can't get to the gym. And these really are an excellent way to build up your shoulders, your traps, your triceps. They're quite challenging when you first do them. They require a little bit more balance, obviously not as much as a full handstand push-up. Um, and you're lifting less of your body weight compared to a full handstand push-up. But I think these are a really good way to get in that overhead pressing movement uh, and is a good way for intermediates to uh, really build up their shoulders without a barbell, without free weights. Next we have chin-ups. So these are going to be similar to pull-ups, but also slightly different. So these are going to be a little bit more biceps. So these are gonna be a little bit more biceps and also a little bit more lat. But they're going to be less teres major, less rear delt, and less lower trap compared to the overhand grip. Um, today I did three sets of 10, I believe, and most of these were close to failure. For me, I use a full range of motion and I go down all the way to a dead hang at the bottom and then at the top, I go into uh, as high as possible, at least with my chin over the bar, but I'm touching my chest to the bar if possible, just to get that extra contraction of the lower traps, the forearms, and the rear delts. 
Then I move to dips for the pushing movement. These are great for the chest, the front delt, the, uh, the triceps. Uh, today I did six sets of 15, and that's a little bit less than I usually do, believe it or not. I usually do six sets of you know 20 to 25, uh, but considering the fatigue from the pike push-ups, I was pretty happy with this. Then the next pulling movement that I moved on to is bar rows. Now these are very, very challenging. These are very difficult, deceptively difficult. They look very easy, but in fact, they are at least as difficult as pull-ups, in my opinion. Um, this is because the angle of pull is actually slightly more challenging, um, just biomechanically. So on these ones, I actually did six sets, and they were all drop sets. So I would go to failure with the normal foot position, and then I would move my feet down to a lower foot position, which makes the exercise essentially easier. So you can go to failure and then keep going to failure just by modifying the movement slightly. And so it's continuing to be difficult throughout the entire time. Then I moved on to reverse grip push-ups. Now these are more of an upper chest exercise. And so they pair fairly well with dips, which are a lower chest exercise. So uh, these are also deceptively challenging. Um, they're almost like a progression towards what's called a planche push-up, where your feet are not on the ground. But uh, I'm not quite there yet. My legs are quite, uh, quite chunky still. And so I just do these reverse grip push-ups. And I think I did three sets of 10 to 12 reps. And then finally, I finished off with a few explosive sets of neutral grip pull-ups. So this is a good way to really feel explosive while you are fatigued. Most people say you should put explosive exercises in the beginning of the workout. And while I think that is you know, a good thing to do and it has value, I think there is also value in being able to be explosive when you are tired. So at this point, I already had uh, you know, at least a dozen sets, half of those drop sets in my back. So I was obviously a little bit fatigued, but I'm st still trying to be as explosive as possible and really explode my chest towards that bar um, in order to get the most out of the exercise. If you're one of my clients and I wrote you a gym plan, feel free to contact me through email, through Instagram, and just say, Jeff, can you write me a home workout plan and I am happy to do so for free, just because I would rather have you be safe than be really excited about your plan, go to the gym, and then get sick. Or not get sick, but then you know, get your parents sick or get your grandparents sick. So I'm happy to write you up a plan for free that you can do safely at home. I can't promise that it'll be 100% as effective as a gym, but I can promise that you will get good results and it will be effective, okay? So uh, hit me up for that if you're already a client. If you're not already a client, um, I offer home plans, gym plans, blah, 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 blah. So uh, also hit me up. By the way, if you're actually doing this workout during this coronavirus stuff, I was gonna say bullshit, but fuck it. <laughs> Make sure you are careful. Wash your hands before, wash your hands after, don't touch your face, don't touch your mouth, don't touch your eyes, don't touch your dick, don't touch your balls, don't touch your ass. Just touch the bar and nothing else. Not today! Not today! So, what have we learned today? You don't need a gym, you don't need curls, you don't need extensions, you don't need bench press, you don't need pull downs. You just need yourself and a burning desire to get swifty. All right, that is all for today. I will put the full workout on the screen so you can see it. Uh, you could pause it and, and read through it. Make sure to scale it to yourself. Don't start off the first day with all of this work as it could be uh, Unoptimal. Inoptimal.
suboptimal to hit. All right, make sure to like and subscribe. Lots more to come, and I will see you next time.